Diving straight into hashtag TGIF 410 with Brent Linda, Ooh, activation architect and Cliff Central and radio host joining us for our social media section. Brent, let's start off with uh, Wayne van Nierkijk doing what I do in my sleep backwards, 400 meter sprints. Well, we all do, don't we? <laughs> Just a little bit of uh, activity on a Friday. Um, no, it's amazing what he's done because it highlights athletics in South Africa yeah. again. It, it gets all the corporates uh, thinking about it and that will bring the backing, the money into the sport. Um, he got a gold medal, it's incredible. Did he, did, he get, uh, did, did he have South Africa behind him? I mean, I'll be the first one to admit that until this particular event, I don't know who Wayne van Nierkek was. That is the amazing thing about social media, neither did I. And most uh, of South Africa wouldn't have either. Unless you follow the sport yeah. or follow athletics, there is no way that you would have known. Yeah. Did, you, were you, did you tune in for Bolt or did you tune in for van Nierkek? I mean, I know it's different races, but it's like the same event. What, what do you mean Bolt? You saying Bolt. <laughs> <laughs> this is very unfair. You're putting me on the spot here. Listen, I, 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 I was very much heavy in, in swimming and uh, athletics um, growing up. So obviously the IF is very important uh, mm. to me. Uh, what disappointed me was that the Kenyans this time around did not really step up to the plate, didn't they? And it just shows you how amazing competitive sport mm. is. But I think I didn't, I didn't know about him. But just doing what he did yeah. and what he achieved reminds me of what we saw with uh, Penny Haynes uh, oh, yes. with the gold medals. You know, it, it just, it, 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 it's amazing how sport is able to just create this nation awareness about mm. what people can actually achieve. That's exactly it, is that it does create that yeah. vibe between South Africa yeah. and it, bring, it highlights the sport. But guys, you're missing something. So uh, let's get those tweets rolling so that we can uh, show what South Africa was saying uh, throughout this week on this. So I'm hearing that Casta, though, finished dead last in her race. What's going on there? I have no idea, and I was going to bring that up. Uh, we need a positive spin on our sports in South Africa. Because if you look at the current rugby and how things are going, in the media, we're not doing great with sports. Mm -hmm. So with, with him winning a gold medal, it brings it to light. That it, did, that it's did you think, do you think South Africa and social media broke Casta? I hope not. No, I don't think so. No, I I, I how does an, an all-star like that come last in her race? I think that is uh, what happens to any athlete when you start yeah. uh, losing focus and um, you don't focus on the right things and you don't do enough training and maybe you think that this is coming too easy and you become a bit more complacent, you know. I, and, and I sound like I'm a very negative person, but I'm not. I'm, I'm very positive in actual fact. But <laughs> those elements do not get away from your competitiveness mm. so that's why we're seeing her not doing her utmost best and it has nothing to do with julius Melemane in his comments <laughs> i don't know what juju's <laughs> comments were this week but bryce williams bryce big williams, story big story incredibly sad for it to happen on live tv and to see that um the twitter sphere was speaking about the fact that america needs to be harder on their gun controls yeah. Uh, and, and they do. It's, it's, it's a reality and the world is saying that they need to be a little bit harder on their gun controls. What was awesome was the hashtag that came out of it in solidarity. Mm. All the journalists started showing themselves uh, out in the open with their cameramen going, we're more than just colleagues, we're family. Mm. And we stand behind uh, that we don't agree with what has happened. I am Charlie, similar? Yes. Yeah. Yes, exactly the same. Yeah. Um, and, th and that's the, the upside of social media. In, in the face of tragedy, people can stand up and stand together and, and, and sort of start a collective conversation. My thing about social media is, I mean, it's one thing to create momentum. It's one thing to bring eyeballs to a particular uh, situation. But can you actually affect change? So here, the big victory would be a change in stance in the gun laws in the US. And I don't know if this is big enough to achieve that. We could only hope so. One of the biggest downfalls that social media has is something called slacktivism. And it's the armchair... Slacktivism. Slacktivism. It's the armchair heroes that sit and whip out their phones and tweet about how they are not agreeing with something. Mm. And then that's all they do. So um, when it comes to, to creating action, cause and change, yes, 100%. We can only hope that someone sees the story because it's been raised on mm. social media and, uh, and the big awareness, and they actually do something about mm. it. So a, a story that just snowballed out of control uh, this week was Open uh, Stellies. Uh, and maybe, maybe uh, let's go back um, just to where it started, Brent. 
and and then this, the 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 ripple effect in terms of where it went. There was a couple of um, documentary students at Stelly's that made a documentary. It's about thirty two minutes long. It is on uh, YouTube, mm. and and I watched the video. Is this the one called Leicester? Yes. Okay. Leicester, and. Uh, that is their opinion. That is the way that they feel. And, and any hi given human right is you shouldn't feel that way. You shouldn't be oppressed in, in the situation that you're in or in your university or wherever you, you are in life. You shouldn't be oppressed. So they are 100% right to have their opinion. Um, I just think the fallback is, again, social media. When you make something public, there's going to be people that don't agree with you. Mm. And, and that's where it gets a little bit tricky, is that you have these two sides that are on a public platform. Yeah. Um, making making the laundry dirty. Do you think it's a reminder, though, of even those who do occupy um, the opportunity to have a voice in the media space, myself included, that you are not God and that you are just a normal human being and that you will be taken on and 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 attacked if you know because of the public. Uh, exposure you have, perhaps your voice will be amplified a bit more. And this is exactly what we saw this week. Agreed. And, and I made a conscious decision not to tweet about it. Mm. I made a conscious decision not to get involved because it's not my fight. I don't go to studies. I'm, I'm not part of that university. And um, yeah, it got ugly. It got ugly on Twitter. It's, it's, it's Here's my question. Yeah. Authenticity or dramatization? And and it's always difficult to draw the line, specifically when you're on social media, because anybody can say anything. So um, I, I watched the video, I'm glad you watched it as well. Um, and the decision whether to get involved or not uh, did not rest on the, the, the fact that you are in the university or not. I think it relied more on the fact that, as a South African, what does this say about us 21 years post-democracy? Mm. And, and that's, that's the sort of impact it had on me and I decided you know what I won't get involved not because um, I I don't think I should be but because of the fact that I felt that it's so much there's so much negativity already uh, mm. that's taken place I'd rather concentrate on the positive and that did not sound like a I think that that's that's me. really interesting so I am a Stellenbosch student a current student uh, at that so it's but it's the business school and the culture there is significantly different it's no different from being at any uh, corporate or business school in you must be fluent in Afrikaans then <laughs> no we speak English uh, but it's it's just amazing that how you know it could be the same sort of institution yeah. but completely different experience uh, but th the thing that I want to ask around this, uh, Brent, is that we saw uh, the Roads Must Fall movement in South African universities, and now we're having uh, the ANC investigating uh, racism at Stellenbosch. Are we at a tipping point when it comes to our institutions of higher education? Um, I don't think we are at a tipping point. I went to a Lead SA conference a couple of weeks ago, and the vice rectors from all the universities were there, and they, they, their biggest um, sort of challenges are getting people into the universities. Mm. So they're trying to curb uh, big problems, massive problems that they're concentrating on. Uh, the students are always going to protest. There's always going to be something that they might not like in the university. And it's difference of opinions. It's and student activism is good. It's good. It's, 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 a, it's nurturing a democracy and all of that. Canteen Unfortunately, food. And? Canteen food. Canteen yeah. food. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that note, I'm going to put my hard hat back on. There we are. Uh, prove my points and all of that. Hot in a hot hat. Um, and bring this show to an end. Thank you so much for joining us. And of course, a big thank you to Brent, Linda Q, Activation Architect, and Cliff Central and Radio.